Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we do watercolor tutorials and other tutorials, but I teach watercolor. Um, today we are doing the Speckled Eggs project. <laughs> we have my husband Michael here filming with us. Um, the nice thing about being quarantined with your husband that also can help you film tutorials is we can still record these. So that works out. Um, so he's here working the cameras. He'll tell me where to look and we'll chat. We also have my little son Arlo here because he's just a baby and he's with me all the time. You can now. hear him breathing. Listen, everyone quiet. Can they hear it? Yeah. <laughs> so that is good. Let's get started. Uh, we are going to be using two paintbrushes today, around six and around oh. two. Um, we used to name these Hank and Keith, and then I got new ones, and we never renamed them. If you think we should rename them, okay. tell us in the comments, and we'll rename them. Deal? Deal? Okay. Um, round six and round two, Princeton Heritage Series Great Brushes. We are using four colors today. So our very first color is... Tahoe blue. Our second color is fuchsia. fuchsia. Our third color is burnt orange. And our fourth color is amethyst. So we will be doing this painting in four steps. So our very first step is we are going to be doing a light wash for our egg. Second step, we will be doing wet on wet speckles. So we'll be dropping in other colors while the eggs are still wet. The third step, I just kind of lumped it all together, but we will be repeating that same process for all the eggs and letting that dry. And then the fourth step is a technique called wet on dry. And that's where we're gonna put on these speckles that are defined and have a sharper shape. So we are going to do our oath and our warm up and get started. So uh, if you can raise your right hand, you too, Michael. Repeat after me. Oh, I'm afraid to wake him up. <laughs> I was gonna make him raise his little arm. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. And I like to start that way because sometimes we don't even realize how um, competitive or how much we're kind of like comparing ourselves to others and <clears throat> being really hard on ourselves which kind of takes out the joy so remember this is just to have fun this is to relax this is to play and explore um, the very first technique that we're going to go over is wet on wet so I'm going to grab my paintbrush you can use whichever ones in this warm-up I'm going to get it wet and I always hit my paintbrush off the side of my cup because I don't want my paintbrush dripping. That's too much water. And I'm going to pick up some paint, any color. And I'm going to put it on my paper. And if you want to get a lighter value, so you see how the value in itself is getting lighter here. All you have to do is add water. That's it. So I'm not grabbing white and mixing with it. All I'm doing is just picking up more water and grabbing the paint that I've already laid down. What that does is it makes the paint more transparent, which means you show, you see the white of the paper underneath, which is why it's coming out a lighter value. Now to do wet on wet, you want to make sure that your surface is wet and then you're going to grab a color. Since it's warm up, it doesn't really, ooh, I should do purple actually. And you just drop it in. And because you're putting something wet on a wet surface, it's gonna bleed and it's gonna spread. You can do water drops. You can help it move a little bit more. But I love, love, love this texture because this is where you get some accidental elements because really all we're doing is just dropping in colors and then letting it do its own thing, and you can get some super cool hard lines and um, edges that way when it dries. The next um, technique that we're going to go over is just wet on dry, which pretty much means we're gonna paint the surface 
let it dry, and then when it is dry, we will paint on top. The purpose of that is if you want to do layers and keep your layers sharp. So you can see with the wet on wet, when we layer on top of a wet surface, the paint kind of diffuses and it softens any edges. Um, but if you do wet on dry, then the edges will stay hard. So it's great for like detail work and stuff like that. So if I'm gonna use this uh, fuchsia here that has already dried and I grab some paint and I could do dots on top, I can do leaves, but it's keeping its shape where if I try to do that in here, kind of just bleeds out. You see? Okay, cool. All right, I think we're ready to get started. So I'm gonna get a new piece of paper. Keep your scratch paper close by because we're gonna be mixing some colors um, to get our eggs. So let's get started. All right, so of course you guys have the right to do whatever colors you want. You do not have to follow this example exactly. I'll try and do it to the best of my abilities, but since we're mixing colors, they're always gonna turn out slightly different. Can you hear him snoring? Cause he's snoring, <laughs> so cute. Um, they're always gonna turn out a little bit different and that's okay, that's the joy of mixing colors um, is you get to make it your own. So I'm gonna try and make like a desaturated purple. Whenever you wanna tone down the vibrancy of a color, all you have to do is mix in its complement. So, um, and the, a complement color is what's across from it on the color wheel. So purple is yellow, red and green and blue and orange. Now we don't have yellow, but we do have burnt orange, which I'm gonna lighten up here with some water. And then I'm gonna grab some of my um, amethyst and I'm gonna mix that together. You gotta be careful though, cause too much it turns brown, right? Which is exactly what is happening right here. So if that's happening to you, all I have to do is, okay, I just need a little bit more purple because I want this to be a purple tint. There we go. Now we're getting a desaturated purple. And so you guys can see the difference here is it mixed? Here is the purple out of the tube, okay? So, but I wanted to do a desaturated to get a slightly more realistic look, um, but if you like that vibrant purple, go for it. You know what I mean? It's your painting, it's your life. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so I'm also mixing a little bit of water into there to make sure it's a lighter value. And, this is gonna be the hard part is getting them straight while I have this like baby. Sarah, don't compare it. Turn my microphone on. Okay. Don't compare it to your previous work. Okay, but you know what? That's a good point. Yeah. Cause let me tell you, it's really hard to make two paintings look the same. Well, now you have something to blame. <laughs> the baby? <laughs> okay, so I have my painting paint on my paintbrush and I'm just going to um, do an egg shape, which is essentially an oval with the top slightly uh, thinner. And also, as someone who has had chickens and eggs, some eggs are funky shaped. You know what I mean? Some are like squatty and round. Some are long and thin. Our brave tenure with chickens. <laughs> Listen, they it's really hard. hard to keep chickens alive in Missouri when you live with foxes and raccoons. raccoons and all and apparently a things. mountain lion in our backyard. Yeah, yesterday there, was it a mountain lion or a cougar? Cougar. I don't know if there's a difference. I don't know either. Yeah, so we're, we're, we can't let our girls play outside until animal control. Asks it to leave nicely. Yeah. I'm sure. Please, sir. It's a ma'am. Is it? Uh-huh. How do you know? I guess they can tell by its call. Oh. I don't know. Cool. They think it has babies. Okay, so here's my egg. Remember, you can always reshape it if like the first line you put down was like, ooh, that's weird. Just reshape it as you go, not a big deal. Okay, now while it's wet, I'm going to mix a little bit more orange to this purple to get kind of a different color. And I'm gonna be dropping in color. You can also drop in some water. But we kind of want the eggs to look speckled. And if you look at some speckled eggs, some of the speckles look really soft and like fuzzy. And then some are really, can you hear them? Should I move the mic? Yeah. 
and some of the speckles look really like tiny and tight and defined. So that's what we're trying to mimic here is just the different um, colors and textures on a speckled egg. Okay. Now I'm going to keep going with my eggs and then hopefully they'll be drying. So then when I'm done with the last one, I can go to the first one and do the last step, which is the wet on dry. So the next color I'm going to do is pink. Um, pink is closest to red on the color wheel. So then the opposite of red is green. We do not have green, but we have kind of a yellowish orange and we have blue. So let's mix that together. And you can get some really pretty like desaturated turquoises with that, which I think is this color right here. Oh, it's so good. Okay. And then I'm going to mix that with my pink to tone it down. Grab some water because I want this to be a light value. And I'm going to do my second egg. And this one I'm going to make a little bit bigger. And I'm adding a little bit more pink so it's different from the first one. And you can see it's not like my drawing is excellent. Like you're looking at that and you're like, I'm sorry, is that an egg? But give it, give it, a t give it time, round it out. You can always make adjustments. You don't have to judge it by its first brush stroke. That's just not fair. This is when people find out you've been faking it the whole time. Okay, here's, <laughs> what if I'm like, listen, somebody else paints all of these projects. <laughs> it's not your hands. It's on not the my hands. Camera. There's actually someone sitting up underneath here who's like super talented and can paint without seeing. While we're on it, it's not a real baby. It's just one of those noisy dolls. <laughs> I just really needed a break. He's snoring so loud. Should I move the mic? No, no, no. Is it distracting though? It's endearing. Okay. I, if this irritates you, I'm sorry. Michael made the call. Michael made the call. We'll fire him. <laughs> okay. I'm also going to drop in just a little extra pink on the bottom. I'm actually going to round this guy out a little bit more. That looks like an egg, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's an egg an ostrich egg yeah and if you want like more of a bright pink you can just mix it with the orange straight and not mix um, the blue into it and you can get this really pretty bright pink do you like eggs like could you just eat eggs forever I like eggs with other things. I usually don't like eggs just by themselves, but like over easy egg on a piece of toast, yes. What is it about eggs you don't like by themselves? What, what gets gross about them? It's not that they get gross. I just feel like the texture is not enough to make me happy with by itself, but like with other things, yes. Okay. So Makes like, sense. and I love putting like Michael knows whenever he makes like rice dishes or like Asian dishes, he always just does a fried egg on top for me because I'm like all about that life. It's her middle name, Sarah Fried Egg. <laughs> Sarah, just give me a fried over easy egg any day with other things. Okay. So while this is nice and wet, I'm going to drop in the other, like the browner pink for the under speckles. That's its technical name actually, mm -hmm. under speckles. My actually, one of my favorite snacks in the evening when it's like, you know, what is that called? Midnight snack? Taco Bell calls it the fourth meal. It Really? Yeah. Well, the fourth meal is uh, just an over easy egg on buttered toast. Love it. I'm much more simple. I love Cheez-Its. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of Cheez-Its. Okay. That's good. I need to stop messing with it as I paint more. It's fine. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the third egg, which is kind of this really pretty green here. I already have green mixed up, so I'm just gonna use that. And I'm gonna try, this one's gonna be smaller. It's a, These do not all need to be the same size. I did that on purpose because making things all the same size freehand, super hard. 
I'm not going to ask you to do that. So I kind of mess with the proportions and the layout here and you guys can adjust it to you. So like, let's say that you accidentally made this one way big and you didn't mean to, you can then maybe do a sideway one here and then three on the bottom, you know, small. So you guys just adjust, um, the composition as you see fit. You don't have to follow this exactly. So I'm going to do a small one. I use water to fill it in. Oh, My I next question it. was leading to, um, have you eaten other animal eggs like duck or anything? Fill it? I don't know. I remember we went out to dinner. Yeah. And I got something with a over easy quail egg. I was going to say, I feel like I've like, had quail egg. It was yeah, like the it's size like of so a tiny. <laughs> it was so cute. Okay, and I'm dropping in like a darker green for the speckles. And I'm just leaving it. We're just letting it do its thing. And you can see that um, if you want it to be stronger, like this one has bled out and it's not super strong. I don't mind that, but if you wanna be like, no, I want in your face soft speckles, then uh, you can do another, just mix a darker value, drop it in again. So you can kind of keep your eye on the eggs as you're working your way down to see if there's any adjustments you need to make. Okay, this one's gonna be orange. I think this one's just a burnt orange. This one's small. I'm bringing it in a little bit. How's quarantine been? You know, <laughs> no, it's been surprisingly, I think a lot of people have been worried about having a newborn, have been worried for me with having a newborn during all of this stuff. But um, thankfully, I'm, I'm pretty calm. I'm not too worried, but we've been really safe and we live in a very small remote town so it's not hard to like stay home stay home because it's not like there's like a big city around us how about you um it's been pretty good there are fleeting moments where i feel bored but then i remember that i can do whatever i want yeah you know? yeah we have kind of wore out our TV shows options. Okay. There's my orange speckly egg. Now I'm gonna do, this one is, okay, this is kind of like a cream color, but it's really hard to mix. So don't get mad at yourself if you can't. We actually almost got it with our purple. Basically, I just want to mix like a tan with the uh, burnt orange and the amethyst. And then I'm just going to add some water to that. If you wanted to have a blue hint, like you can put hints of other colors. So maybe you're like, I kind of want a tan, but like a pink undertone. Well, then add a little bit of pink or um, what have you. I think I'm going to add a little bit of blue, actually. It's going to make it a little bit more gray. I'll give it a cooler touch. And I'm going to actually do the thinner side on this and the thicker side over here since this egg is shorter. So I'm going to draw it on its side this way. Kind of looks like a potato. <laughs> That's okay, you guys. It's okay. Don't give up. You just need to reshape it, okay? But I'm going to fill it in with water first. Because if you let the outline be like dry too long, okay, actually I'm going to move it on its side so I can actually see what the shape is. Um, if you leave the outline too long, it will be hard to blend out so you'll always have like a hard edge on your painting. So usually when I like draw an outline, I try and like blend it with water as soon as possible so then it's an even blend instead of having like a dark outline. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, this one is a nice long skinny egg but i'm telling you they exist somewhere <laughs> i feel like i have seen long skinny it's eggs like a snake before egg. yeah there we go 
We're celebrating all of life, all the different eggs. When I was looking into what chickens to get, there's yeah. a group of chickens called Easter Eggers. They're different breeds that like lay the blues and the light greens. And, really? Because you don't have to dye them. They're already Easter colored. Yeah. Easter Eggers. That's cool. Do do chickens, I don't know if you know this. <laughs> If you wanted a certain shape of egg, does that determine the type of chick? Like, can you be like, this chicken lays really round eggs? Is that a thing? I mean, maybe. I think it's more size. Like, some chickens lay tiny eggs and some lay big. Okay. But not necessarily, like, the roundness or... I don't think so. You're disappointing me with your lack of knowledge about... I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm just kidding. You're great. Okay, there's my egg. I'm going to call that one my avocado egg. Doesn't that one look like an avocado? Yes. Okay, that's okay. (laughs) Okay, now we're going to do more of a blue. And you can see on my palette here that all of my colors are kind of starting to mix together, which I'm not really mad about because I, I want to tone down all these colors anyway, like get muddy colors for this on purpose. So it just makes it easier for me to like grab stuff. Arlo, you're so cute. Can't handle it. Okay. Sound like my dad. Sorry, dad. Is that how your dad snores? Yeah, like times 10. Oh, that's a cute little leg I just did. Good job, Sarah. Is it so? Can you hear me over it, though? Yeah. I think I'm just stressing that. You can't hear what I'm saying. Okay, and I'm going to drop in <laughs> some blue. I wish I was ever as comfortable as that boy is right now. I mean, he is out. Which makes sense, because let me tell you, he did not sleep last night. Having a hard night. Okay. All right. Okay, now these are kind of like a pink purple. So a little bit of uh, fuchsia, a little bit of amethyst. If you want to tone it down, add a little bit of orange. I just like the, I think the small little eggs are cute too. These kind of remind me of a Cadbury mini eggs, which I literally cannot count how many eggs Michael Michael and I have eaten. Don't blame me. Like, we buy bags and bags at a time, and we just can't stop eating them. They're so good. I think at this point, we're a majority shareholder of Cadbury. I mean, we should be. We're keeping them in business, really. So many eggs. But that's, like, my favorite Easter candy ever. Okay, now I'm going to do, like, a dark purple. Now... If you guys don't want to do speckles on some of these or have like the brown speckles, you don't have to. I'm going to leave these plain and do some just sharper speckles on them just to see what it looks like. Okay, now I'm going to do a dark purple. So I'm going to grab a lot of amethyst, mix that with my blue. And grab more purple. And let's bring some orange into there and see what that does. Whoa, I need more purple. And maybe a little bit of pink. Wow, I mixed all the colors on this one. Okay. And one more. I'm going to make this one longer. Just because. Okay. Oh, oh, that's so crowded. Okay. Okay, you guys. If this is happening to you, don't freak out. My egg is really crowded with these other two, right? So it kind of throws the composition off just a little bit. But if that happens, we can adjust. Let me drop in some pink in there. So what I'm going to do to like adjust it 
is I think I'll do another little egg right here. I think that will help. And this one I'll do like a light blue. That turned kind of green, so I'm gonna just do more blue. Cute little light blue egg right here. I'm gonna say it because I'm sure there's somewhere out there in Llama Land that knows what I'm talking about, but that purple egg looks like a void egg from Stardew Valley. Grows void chickens. Yep. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. Okay, so that felt the filled the space a little bit better for me. I'm gonna call that good. Um, I I think that's actually fine. If it feels too airy on the top and too like congested on the bottom, you can do another little egg right here. But for me, it's really easy to kind of like go crazy adding stuff just to make it feel even. So usually what I'll do is I'll add one element and then I kind of like let it be for a bit and let it breathe and like walk away from it to make sure that I really want to keep adding stuff because I have a feeling that if I add an egg right here, then I'll want to do like more. And so it's always a good idea um, compositionally to take breaks from things and come back and look at it to make sure that that thing that you added is something that you actually really want to add. You can also use different things to fill in spaces too. Um, I think I actually saw someone in the Facebook group do this project already and they just added like feathers in between two, which I thought was really pretty. We do have a feathers tutorial so you guys can um, use that to add some feathers in, but you can do leaves, you can do like little words, you guys can play with whatever you want. Okay, so I did my egg composition. Um, these also kind of look like rocks, don't they? Hmm. Um, and now I'm going to go in and do my last step, which is wet on dry. So I'm going to just be grabbing some browns, purples, darker values, and do some speckles. Now your challenge with your speckles is usually our brain likes to look for patterns and it makes patterns without knowing it. So the challenge for you is to make sure your speckles are not all the same size and evenly spaced apart because that is usually not how it happens in nature. So I'm going to do like one here and one here, here, maybe a little do, do, do. If you're having trouble getting um, small speckles, you can switch to your round two. Also, don't forget that the egg is three-dimensional and goes around. So on the edges, you would see some speckles coming around off the edge. And I'm going to mess some of these up, which I know kind of defeats the purpose of the speckle, the sharp speckles, but this one is just so dark that I need to like get dark in mine a little bit and I can go back and add more too but these ones on the top will stay sharp. Okay, and then next one. And also the speckles do not have to be perfectly round. When I was looking at different um, eggs and looking at the different markings on eggs, um, they were imperfect. So, um, don't feel pressured to have to like get all of these spots perfectly. The eating of the first egg is a time I would visit in my time machine. Like who was like, you know what? That, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to crack this open and I'm going to. I bet they ate it with the shell. I bet they just like, no. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Or how long did they eat it raw before they think to, they thought to cook it? Or these something. are the questions that you I'm so. You butter and chives, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so curious. <laughs> okay, now I have like a dark green. And if you want like more square speckles instead of round, you can use the side of your paintbrush to do them. So then they kind of have more square instead of like going on top and trying to do round. Okay. And if you want to like drop in strong color, which I do because I'm edgy, you can just, <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> you can just drop it colors, but just see what happens. Okay, okay, I'm going crazy. Okay, Sarah, you need to stop it. Okay. One, one more, one more. There we go. Okay, orange. We're almost done, guys. You're doing great. Now, also, if you are a subscriber to our April box, we had a bonus item of a Micron pen. And I showed you in the carrot tutorial how you can use it. You could also use it in this one. Let's say you want to do your speckles using a pen. Go for it. A little bit more control. Or you could do both pen and watercolor. If you want to do like tiny little speckles, that actually might be cute on this one. Let's do tiny little speckles. So really play with mixing the kind of ink and the paint. You could also do lettering with this. Egg. Egg. Eggs. <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. Let's keep on going. Okay. I'm going to do kind of a grayish dark dots here. Yeah, isn't that cool? This is my favorite part right here. Look at that. Look at this right there. Yeah. We're in rare form today. <laughs> what is my form? I don't know. Edgy. <laughs> Listen, I've been literally in my house for seven weeks straight. Actually, I came out like twice. So I guess that's not true. Oh, also, um, my hand smeared this. You see that? If that happens to you, it happens to me all of the time. You are not alone. A couple tricks. If you have, try to see if we have one here. Magic eraser? Yeah. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. This is what you're going to want to do. It's not going to work. If you do like black lettering with black watercolor, it's not going to erase that. That's just too heavy. But this, it can erase or at least lighten up to where it's not so distracting. You're going to tear off a clean piece of the tiny of the Magic Eraser. You're going to dip it in clean water and squeeze it. And you are going to softly rub on the paper over the spot and it should remove it. If you rub too much, it will disintegrate the paper. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk about moving, removing stains. This one I decided to add like a purple color because again, why not? Hmm. I like that. Okay, we're almost done. We just have a couple more to do. And you can see that I'm kind of, I'm doing my speckles. I'm leaning more towards the bottom with doing a little bit on the top and kind of more towards one side. And the reason why I'm doing that is because sometimes when you do an even layer on top of texture, it flattens your, whatever you're trying to paint. So I'm trying to just like remind the viewer that there's a form here by not doing it evenly across the entire thing. Okay, this one is pretty dark, so I don't know if you'll be able to see the speckles, but let's try it. The void egg? Yeah, it's such a, that like pink purple right there is so pretty. Yeah, yeah you can see it a little bit. And I'll do some watercolor spots. And then I switched my two for smaller ones. You can even add over your ink. It shouldn't smear, so if you use your Micron pen, you should be able to paint over it without it smearing. You can see here that I'm doing that. And those dots aren't moving, which is Sarah, cool. I think the obvious name for the new two and six are Brock and Keenan. <laughs> Brock Keenan. <laughs> That's what it is. Done. 
I know we told you guys to vote, but we just decided to make an executive decision without <laughs> you. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Presidential decree. Okay. Um, another thing that you can do to try and lighten up stains if you do not have a magic eraser is you can try and use just water and a paintbrush. Make, your, make sure your paintbrush is clean. And I'm going to just put water on top of it. Kind of rub it. And then take my paper towel. So that one I already erased. Same thing on this one. Just kind of get it wet. Softly rub. And then take a clean paper towel. This one was a little bit darker, so I probably won't be able to get rid of it completely. But I think I you can like lighten it enough that it's not super distracting. Okay, cool. Well, that's it, you guys. We did it. We did our speckled eggs. Uh, if you painted this with us, thank you so much. Um, I would love to see it, and so would a lot of people. So you can join our Facebook group. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor, and it's just a space that we created just so you guys can learn and share with each other. It's so much easier to do hard things when there is a supportive community behind you, and there are people on all different um parts of their journey, I guess, in that group. We have beginners, intermediates, advanced, all of the things. The point is to learn from each other, not to be intimidated by each other or compare your work, and to just like um, have fun. That's, that's really what it is. And even if someone is newer to watercolor, they could approach something or do a new technique that's really cool that I could want to do in my work too. So uh, we go there to learn from each other. Um, again, that's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. Uh, you can tag us on Instagram at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. And if you need any of these supplies that we have used here, you can find those at letsmakeart.com. I think that's all I got to say. Thank you. You guys are awesome. I'll see you next week. Bye.